Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash malicious compliance where people have conformed to the letter but not the spirit of a request. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video. But for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some malicious compliance. Fire me anytime. Here's a way I used malicious compliance to get paid for doing nothing for the next year while dedicating my efforts to the success of the competitors of the people who are paying me. The setting. Office of a small plumbing company offering residential and commercial services. Six days per week plus emergency service after hours and Sundays. Three employees that handle dispatching, technicians, invoicing, scheduling, parts ordering, etc. We all have the same skill set and cover each other's backs. Technically, we have all been hired as dispatchers. Take note. Administrative stuff like payroll, accounts receivable, accounts payable, marketing are all done at head office, which has another two locations just like ours. The cast. OP, 30s guy, single, no kids, very flexible schedule. Smashly, late 20s, single mum, raising three brats between 5 and 10 years old constantly leaving early and missing days due to motherhood duties, doctor's appointments, school meetings, etc. Howard, older than dirt, I think he helped Noah build the ark, has even more elderly parents with dementia, and has an arrangement with his sister. He lives with his parents on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and works Monday to Thursday. Not available on the weekend under any circumstances. His sister lives with the parents Monday through Thursday. Howard doesn't need the job, but if he leaves, then his sister will offload some of these days onto his plate, and he's having none of that. SOB, you'll meet him later. So, the way this worked was Howard would come in at 6am and work until 2.30pm, Monday through Thursday. Smashley would come in and work 9am to 3pm, Monday through Friday after getting her kids off to school and leaving early to pick them up. She would cover the weekends remotely from home. She also came in at 6am on Fridays, since Howard wasn't in. I would come in at 11am, work to 7.30, Monday through Friday, and cover on-call emergencies after hours. My hours were altered from the 8 to 4.30 in my contract by verbal mutual agreement. I didn't mind, I like to sleep in. All went along fabulously for a couple of years, until Smashly messed it all up. One of her duties was vetting and submitting timesheets for payroll, and head office noticed that one of the techs was constantly making more than the others. It turned out that Smashly was doing some horizontal dancing with one of the plumbers, and was inflating his hours on the payroll. It all came to light when a customer called for a warranty issue on some work that was done, and we could find no records in our system. The customer insisted that our tech was out, and the lady on the phone had told them that there was a 20% discount for cash. Emails were sent to head office, GPS records of the truck were examined, and their little scheme was discovered. She was puffing hours for the plumber, and they were making money on cash side jobs on the weekend. Both were fired for cause, and Smashly was stuck trying to raise three kids with no job and no unemployment. So now it's just me and Howard. HR and owner called us into a meeting and explained that Smashly was no longer employed. We worked out a temporary arrangement for scheduling until a third person could be added to the team. Howard would work his usual Monday to Thursday, staying until 4pm on Monday and Tuesday. He would pre-dispatch any late calls, which we would try to avoid. The field supervisor for the plumbers would take after hour calls directly on Monday and Tuesday. I would work Wednesday through Sunday and come in at 8am on Friday and work until my regular close time. I would pre-dispatch the plumbers first calls on Thursday nights. I covered after hours calls Wednesday through Sunday. We were assured that this was a temporary arrangement until a replacement for Smashley could be found. She was let go last May. With only two people covering the office, neither Howard nor I could take any time off, as there was nobody to cover. 
September the 1st, enter SOB. SOB was brought into the picture to handle administrative stuff, which admittedly had gotten a little loose when only Howard and I were covering. Things like missing POs on part orders, missing packing slips, reports of revenue and expenses being incomplete, that sort of thing. We were far too busy just trying to keep things running short-handed to deal with any of this stuff. Howard and I were also told that Sob would cover the dispatch board if required. He was a douche. He came into the shop claiming that he had been brought in to whip us into shape. I couldn't stand him from the beginning. Abrupt, aggressive, and with a vocabulary that used a lot of swear words. Just a douche. Whatever, let him handle his outward facing stuff. Dealing with vendors, ordering parts, fleet maintenance, all that stuff. He also handled timesheets for payrolls and reporting to head office. Fine, I am good with that, and if I have to deal with his BS for a couple hours three days a week, fine. I only worked under the same roof with him Wednesday through Friday, from 11am until his departure around 5pm. It was endurable. I had requested time off twice after he arrived and had been denied both times. Worthy of note is that my contract specified three weeks holiday a year and up until he arrived I had only taken two days off in the spring. Fast forward to late November. If anything, Sob had gotten worse. He was really getting under my skin, and I had just about had enough. I had a teensy issue with anger, and it was becoming more and more difficult to rein in my rage and go after him. Then came the straw that broke the camel's back. I looked at my pay stub and saw that I was short 5 hours. I get paid not only for the hours I am scheduled, but also for the time I put in covering after hours emergency calls. This routinely put me up around 46 to 48 hours a week, with overtime after 44 hours. So, these 5 hours I was short were overtime hours. I went to Sob on the Friday payday and asked for an explanation. He replied that he had been directed to bring overtime down, and if I check my email, I will see a directive that states under no circumstances is anyone to work overtime in this office. This was clearly directed at me and me only, as Howard only put in 36 hours a week and didn't cover on call. So why am I short 5 hours on this pay? I deducted 30 minutes each day for lunch. But I don't take lunch, I just eat a sandwich at my desk. Doesn't matter, I can take 30 minutes off your pay each day as unpaid break time, it's the letter of the law. But I actually worked these hours. Are you serious? You're deducting time for breaks I didn't take? It's the letter of the law. You don't like it? Take it up with the labour board. I don't have time for this stuff. Get back to your desk and do your job. Alright mate, now it's on. Anger me all you like, be a douche all you like, but mess with my money? You are going to pay, and I will screw you over hard. I have a good friend, Eric, that I have known since high school, who is an associate at one of the better law firms in town. I invited him out for a few beers and some wings on Sunday night, and asked him if his firm handled stuff like this. You know, it's amazing the amount of advice you can get for a few pieces of chicken and some beer. Monday, I drove across town to a store and bought one of these. They are pretty easy to get. Just google spy shop for your city or order one off Amazon. I fiddled around with it and figured out how to get it to work. On Wednesday, I showed up for work at my usual 11am start time and things in the office were business as usual until 4pm on the dot. I took my sandwich, a coke and a paperback novel and sat in my car. It didn't take long. About 10 past 4, SOB comes storming into the parking lot and demands to know exactly what I am doing. Taking my lunch break, I replied. The phones are ringing off the hook. Jeff needs to process a credit card payment and Mike is just about to clear his call. I need you back in there right now. Sorry Sob, but if you're not paying me for my break time, then I'm not working through my break time. 
Either you handle it, or I'll take care of it in... I checked my countdown timer on my cell phone. 17 minutes. And then I rolled the window back up. It was beautiful. SOB turned red and stormed back into the office. When I returned, he demanded to know what I thought I was up to. I am entitled to a 30 minute unpaid break. You took that time off my timesheet, so now I am taking my break. I am entitled to it. It's the letter of the law. He sputtered but had no response, so I went back to my desk. Five minutes later, I get an email instructing me to take my break before 2pm so I can be back at my desk before Howard leaves for the day. I replied to his email, BCC copying the owner of the email and HR. I replied that I was unable to do so because, as per labour law, I was not entitled to a lunch break until five hours into my shift. Therefore, I would continue to be away from my desk for 30 minutes beginning at 4pm. I even snipped and pasted a paragraph from the Labour Board website to support my position. He came into my office and chewed me out at length. I wouldn't budge. I told him, it's the letter of the law. If you have a problem with it, take it up with the Labour Board. On Thursday, just after Sob left for the day, I composed and sent him an email. Again. BCC copying in owner and HR. I explained that I had agreed to changing my hours on a temporary basis until a third person could be added to the office. I also agreed to continue to work them until the transition was complete. As the SOB was now firmly in the groove, I now withdraw my consent to the change of hours as contractually specified and beginning Monday would revert to the hours in my contract. Friday, I showed up at 11am, and SOB is waiting for me with a printout of the email. HR and owner have been calling me, what is this all about? Simple, when I was hired, my hours were in the contract, Monday to Friday, 8am to 4.30pm. They were changed by a verbal agreement. Well, I withdraw my consent and stand on the hours specified in my contract. Screw that, you work the same hours until I tell you differently. The hours of service in the contract are the letter of the law, contract law. If you want to change the hours, we can always renegotiate the contract. You want to alter the hours? Fine, then I want to alter my rate of pay. There was a flurry of emails. He would then send to me, and I would copy HR and owner on my replies, since he wasn't copying them in at all. So, I worked Sunday as usual, then showed up Monday at 8am. Howard asked me what was going on because SOB was badmouthing me all over the place to him and to the techs. One thing you should know is that a good dispatcher in the service industry is a rare thing. There are trucking dispatchers and taxi dispatchers and tow truck dispatchers, but finding one that knows how to balance plumbers and customers and solve problems is tough. I get along with all my plumbers and they are all asking me what's happening. I take the high road and basically reveal nothing. I get along with these guys quite well. Towards early afternoon, I send SOB an email explaining that there are some late calls. How late do you need me to work? He replies, until the calls are run. Perfect. So I end up working until 6.30. Same on Tuesday, but 7pm. Wednesday too. Sent emails both days, and SOB told me to stay both days. He replied to me only, and I sent an OK email reply copying the bosses in. By Thursday morning, I had racked up 39 and a half hours. 38 were in the office, and one and a half hours taking after hours calls. About 10 a.m., I sent an email, again copying the bigwigs, and detailing my hours for the week explaining that at 12.30pm I would have a total of 44 hours and as per SOB's directive of such and such a date, prohibiting overtime, I was left with no choice but to go home. Just before I hit send, I turned to Howard and said, you might want to make some popcorn. SOB comes storming in and demands to know what is going on. Well, SOB, I am only following your directive. You said no overtime, right? 
Well, as of 12.30, I will be on overtime. Unless you say different, then I have to go. So, it's either rescind the no overtime, or I head out. Your call. SOB is now screwed. He's been told to dial back on the overtime, and now he's going to have to pay me overtime for half of Thursday, all of Friday, and all of Saturday. Or cover the dispatch board himself. Work the weekend, you miserable person. You'll pay for this stuff. Okay, I need that in writing. And I can't work Sunday, you have to. Listen, you little rat. Don't tell me when I have to work. I tell you when you have to work. And you're working Sunday. Nope. Labor law says specifically that I can get one day off in seven. I can show you. Since I worked last Sunday, and I am working every other day this week, I get this coming Sunday off. It's the letter of the law. Howard can't work it. I can't work it, so I guess you have to. But my kid has a tournament on Sunday. Can't you bend the rules? Sorry, it's the letter of the law. SOB was a real treat to be around for Thursday and Friday, I assure you. And my little spy pen recorded every word of his mouth. Monday, I come in. I think this was the 26th of November. And the owner and HR and SOB are waiting for me. Owner and HR want to know what is going on. They are getting reports that I am being insubordinate and threatening to abandon my job. SOB wants to can me. And up until two weeks ago, I was a model employee. I explain everything and refer them to the emails that I copied them in on. They ask what started this whole mess. And I told them that SOB... He was told to reduce overtime and took time off my check that I had actually worked. He demanded that I go back into work on my break and that I scheduled my break three hours into my shift. I laid it all out. Owner gave SOB the stink eye and said, I never told you to dial back overtime. They asked me if I were to be willing to go back to the hours I was working before. We can discuss it, but... Since this would be a major change to my employment contract, we will need to renegotiate it, including my rate of pay. Can you go back to those hours and then we'll schedule a meeting? No thank you. If I revert to the previous hours, then you have no reason to schedule a meeting. We do the meeting first, then once we have a deal, you get the hours changed. Let us talk about it, we'll get back to you. Okay. But you need to discuss this soon. I am taking the last three weeks of December as vacation time. SOB explodes with owner and HR right there. You're not taking any vacation without my approval. And I'm not approving a minute of vacation for you. I turn to owner and HR. By labor law, I am entitled to vacation time yearly. By contract law, I am entitled to three weeks. So far, I have taken two days this year. I have requested vacation time and SOB denied it both times. I couldn't take it in between when you fired Smashly and hired SOB because there were only two of us in the office. I get three weeks a year and we are coming up to the end of the year. Company policy is use them or lose them. So I am using them. HR says, we'll pay you out the accrued vacation time. I look at her and reply, mm, I don't agree to your offer. I am entitled to the time. I want the time, not the money. She thinks for a minute and says, We'll roll it over into the new year. I don't agree to your offer. I am entitled to the time this year, not next year. SOB pipes up. But Howard already has two weeks booked off and I'm taking my family to Florida. You can't take the time. There's nobody to run the shop. What? You're going to Florida. So you expect me to run the entire show alone, work seven days a week, and you send an email saying no overtime? Are you serious? Back to owner and HR. Look, I had to work a full year before I was entitled to a vacation. All of the plumbers have to work a full year before they are entitled to a vacation. Labor law says that you have to work a full year before you're entitled to a vacation. 
and he's telling me that I am not allowed to take my vacation because he's going to Florida and he's only been here three months? Is that what I am hearing here? You guys told me to hold off on vacation time until we got a third person. I point at SOB. Well, there he is, right there, and I am taking the vacation I am entitled to. No payout, no rollover. And if you want to renegotiate my contract, it can wait until the new year. And I stormed out of the office. I don't know what the rest of the meeting was like, but about an hour later, SOB starts chewing me out again, saying how he's out of thousands of dollars, and now he has to tell his kids that they aren't going to Disney World. Calls me every name in the book. The next two weeks were awful. What a douchebag. Calling me names, telling me he won't rest until I am out on my butt, telling me I'm the worst person he's ever worked with. So, I took my vacation time, didn't do anything. Didn't travel, just kicked back and relaxed, and spent time with my parents over the holidays. I get back in January, and there's a new face sitting on my desk. And SOB is there with a grin on his face and my separation papers. HR put laid off rather than fired. So I had that going for me, which was nice. Now, where I live, if someone calls a former employer for a reference, all the former employer is permitted to say is the time frame the former employee worked there and whether or not he would be eligible for rehire. So, a few days into January, SOB gets a phone call. Hi SOB, my name is Eric, and we're looking at OP's resume here. He says you were his most recent employer. You're on speaker, what can you tell us about him? SOB goes off like a stick of dynamite, calling me every name in the book, saying that I was a horrible worker, lying about missing time, telling all sorts of BS. I let him go on and on. Hey SOB, recognize my voice? He stops ranting. Yeah, you rat, I know your voice. Ever heard of the law offices of Dewey, Screwem, Ober and Howe? They're lawyers, and this call is being placed from their conference room. Nice talking to you SOB. The next call we're making is to the owner and getting his lawyer's name. It took a while, but a meeting got scheduled with owner, HR, SOB, owner's lawyer, me, and Eric. Eric explained that I was starting a claim for wrongful dismissal, and this meeting was to explore the possibility of a settlement. We laid out everything, every email, a timeline of events, and then the piece de la resistance. A supercut of audio of SOB yelling, threatening, ranting, and just being SOB. It was beautiful. SOB went white. Owner stared at him the whole time like he wanted to erase him from the face of the earth. They asked us to excuse them for a few minutes, so Eric and I went for a coffee and chuckled. They texted us within 20 minutes to return. Owner's lawyer explained that they were admitting no liability or wrongdoing, but that, as a gesture of goodwill, they were willing to offer me three months severance if I would sign a waiver. Eric smiled, declined, and then played the tape from the conference room about the reference. He also mentioned that he was present at the time, and so were two of his colleagues, and were all willing to file affidavits to that effort. Another break. We came back, and they upped the offer to six months. We counted with two years severance. Eventually, we settled on 15 months with me to collect a check every two weeks, as if I was employed, based on an average of my hours for the past six months of my employment. And I had racked a lot of overtime in those six months. They even tried to stick a clause prohibiting me from working for anyone in the same industry while the deal was in effect. But Eric spotted it and had it struck out. My skill set is in demand, and it didn't take long for me to find another job doing the same thing, but for one of their competitors. It's awesome. These guys pay me on one Friday, and my working job pays me on the next. I am racking up savings like you wouldn't believe. And Eric was pretty gentle with his billing. SOB? Yeah, he was canned in no time. And between me and owner's network of contacts, the rumor mill has basically made him untouchable. 
he's still looking for a job as far as I know. I did tell my new employer to get rid of his resume if they ever got one. But if I ever get a phone call asking me for a reference for SOB, all I can tell them is that I worked with them for 4 months in 2018. I can't say more than that, it's the letter of the law. That was a great story, it was just so perfectly read out, like I could read that so easily and it made so much sense and it was such a good story in the end as well. Perfectly legal, he got two, like 15 months of pay without having to do anything and the guy got fired and couldn't find a job. It was just a, it was like a malicious compliance pro revenge crossover but it was perfect. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.